Jordan Mulligan from the Mulligan Brothers, and today's interview highlight is with Master Shu Hung Yi of the Shaolin Temple Europe. This is about Master's 14 truths. Today's video was made possible by our sponsors over at BetterHelp, where you can get professional therapy online. The link is down below. I genuinely recommend this because therapy is something I've been doing myself this last year, um, and I've done it all online as well. So there is a link down below to use that. And also, as always, this is sponsored and brought to you by mulliganbrothers.com, where you can now buy the Inspire Change t-shirts. Before that, let's find out the 14 truths. We 8 billion people, we know what we want, but we are not uh, able to easily achieve it. So we don't have the pleasant life that we want. Why? Because the methods and the approach maybe is wrong. Because the approach in order to get to this pleasantness is wrong. Now, pleasantness in a way, now I would say, is something very, very much related to how you feel on the one side about waking up. How do you feel during the day? But also, what are you carrying on the mind during the average day when you are walking through this lifetime? What do you have on the mind and what do you have in terms how do you feel? Those two things is ultimately what is making your life quality at the moment. So even somebody gives you a present, yeah, he gives you, I don't know, the new Tesla, just as a present, but this day you just felt like, yeah, you don't feel, you just feel bad. You feel bad, your mood is not good. It doesn't matter what present you get. It's, it's irrelevant for you, yeah? But sometimes just a very, very small thing somebody gives you, maybe sometimes even just a word or just a look, and, and you feel that that was a different one. So an easy way, how, how do you know that you had a good day or how do you know you had like a bad day? Good days, I think, you want more of them. You would like in the future more days repeat and have this type of quality like you had uh, today and bad days you say no hopefully this was the last one in this lifetime that I definitely don't need anymore so it's about with what thought and with what feeling are you walking through this lifetime and now because many people now hear that word thought coming from thinking I can also think when I just sit around like this. Yeah, and this is the problem. Yes, we want to get to the thinking. We want to get to the thought. We want to get to the feeling. But thought and feeling is something like very fine. In order to get to what is very, very fine, we make the opposite. We want to get to the thought and the feeling. We deal with the body. We do stuff with the body. Because the thought and the feeling, they can take place while you are just sitting around. That's why you don't sit around. That's why we do the activities known from the Shaolin Temple. Because only this physical aspect of yourself, together with those non-physical aspects, like the thinking, like the feeling, this together is giving you the full range of possibility to adjust something. We humans like stability. Yeah? To be stable, to be balanced. That means, also now talking from the martial arts, when you start your training, no matter what type of system it is, the first things you normally learn in the martial arts is the proper way of standing. Which means the proper way of aligning your body on the earth. Because we say if you cannot stand firmly, no matter what type of techniques and applications you're trying to, um, you're trying to do afterwards, they can only be as good as your foundation is. And this foundation means for us stability of the body, stability of the legs. But 
now trying to translate this into the modern way of living a life. I mean, it's, it's very, very similar. You can start off easily nowadays to become, try and become famous very quickly, try to build up a very high level lifestyle. But the question ultimately is, all these things, one day they will reach their peak and they will vanish again. And then the question remains, what is the foundation that, that is going to hold you up? Because sometimes living a fast way up also means it's going to be a fast way down. That's why very often we say, just look outside the tree. It does not happen in the whole universe that you are planting this tree on one day and one week after you have that uh, that huge tree standing in front of you. It's just not happening in this world. And especially here in Germany, we have the oak trees, which are very famous for their density and for their strength also to withstand all types of different winds and storms. Yes, but at the same time, if you just watch how long <laughs> such an oak tree needs to grow, then you also understand why he has that type of stability because he had plenty of time building his roots into the ground yeah and the roots in a way why do you need them because they are connecting you with the earth which is providing you with all the nutrition that afterwards your stem the crown and all the fruits afterwards need for nourishment and in the same way now again translating it to, to us when we start to try and develop martial skills or any other skills. It doesn't matter if it's a martial skill. Any other skill that you can develop in this world. Any skill must be nourished over and over again. And this is why there is the saying, for example, the real skill, the Kung Fu, what we call Kung Fu, yeah, it's a skill attained by investing a lot of effort. And the only way in order to express this is by repetitive, repetitive structure, repetitive movements. And therefore is the saying, perfection comes from repetition. Because this is also why somebody becomes so good in, in filming, making very nice video shots, very nice footage. Why? How come? I'm sure he very often had his camera in his hands. Yeah? Other people working with wood. He must work with wood in order be, to become a good woodworker. Somebody who is practicing or is uh, in the martial art fields. His lifetime, his 24 hour day must be filled with martial art way of life. So in order to know in what is a person good in, you just need to look at the 24 hour day, at the seven days a week, at every month and at the last two, three years. And then you can very much tell already what type of skills a person, for example, uh, can develop or has developed. And in a way, I understand also that nowadays, especially when it comes to Shaolin Temple, in the combination with the Buddhism, which is the fundamental philosophy or way of thinking embedded in the Shaolin Temple, Sometimes it happens that it moves uh, in, in such a very weak direction or let's say not weak, in a soft direction in terms of it's all about compassion, it's about love, it's about uniting, it's about understanding others, it's about acceptance, not living too much in extremes, which certainly is very true. These are really, really valuable teachings when the time has come to understand them. Yeah. 
which means, yes, you want freedom of the mind. But in order to get freedom of the mind, our approach, let's say, for example, is you are dealing with the restriction of yourself. If, you, if your goal is to find freedom of the mind and you directly try to approach it by behaving like you are free, by talking like you would be free, this is the wrong way. So what I mean by that is, uh, we are in the 21st century, everybody thinks he's like in the, in the free world and he is able to speak out freely what he thinks and to behave freely. Yeah, but it's the same, like I mentioned again. If you are in a partnership and then you go out somewhere on the beach and you see other beautiful people there, yeah, a free person now would say, yeah, I'm a free person, I can cheat around how I want. But this type of freedom is not the one that we talk about. Because this type of freedom, you think you are free, so you behave free. No. This is going to bring out the destructive elements of the human. The freedom that we talk about is, you, it's the freedom that you do not need to listen to what the mind is telling you. The freedom of that you are taking your own decisions and that you are able also to restrict yourself. So it's very paradox. On the one word I'm, I'm saying it's about freedom, but this freedom goes hand in hand with your ability to restrict yourself. And this is what you see here with the guys in the monastery. As long as they stay inside this monastery, they have a lot of rules and a lot of things are forbidden, let's say. Many people cannot handle this. They have difficulties handling it sometimes. Nevertheless, I know the day will come where just three years have passed. And when they look back, they realize three years long, how could I even imagine to live such a way full of restrictions? And then they realize that because they stayed in all of these, these restrictions, now suddenly it's gone. Yeah. Now, even if you tell them, hey, you're not to eat because it's not eating time, for them it's okay. Yeah. Then you say, hey, look, today is no party time. You just cannot go out. We have other things to do. It's okay. Yeah? Or you cannot meet your friend today. It's okay. And with this type of ability that you can handle quite a lot of things, with this type of ability, now you can go out in the world. Because now <laughs> nothing simply brings you out of balance so quickly anymore. Why? Because you have stopped outsourcing. You have disciplined your mind. You have taken your own responsibility into your hands. That the life quality, the way how you are perceiving this lifetime, it's up to you. It's up to your practice. It's not to wait until the outside circumstances and your government and this world is going to create your dream world. It's not going to happen. Mm? It's about how can you contribute? How can you as an individual contribute to bring out this world that you imagine how it should be? And this is how I see, for example, why I'm doing this type of work. I am trying to share out what I think is missing. And this is just for my part. I think this is missing. I want to see it more in the world, in my dream world. That's why I contribute to make this dream world now start to manifest a little bit. And this is uh, how I think 
at least for me, is quite a fulfilling way because I don't think, I don't wake up and like have the feeling I'm wasting my lifetime. Because this probably would be like one thing. Sometimes I think uh, when I <laughs> look into the future, one of the worst things that could ever happen is that you one time just wake up, you are old already, look back at your lifetime and then you start regretting that you uh, didn't do something with your life. This is really something that I don't want to be in. That's why right now I'm already very careful in what do I invest my lifetime. If it's not important to me, then uh, I don't do it. If I think it is something that gives me additional value, then I do it. But nevertheless, today we are famous and today we are very proud of the Shaolin warrior monks. But why are you, why are we always keeping up that word warrior monks? Because they are expressing something. They are expressing something which when you can feel it, you feel it's something very special to have nowadays. Yeah? And I used to explain it a little bit like this, that now 21st century, there is this word, it's Zeitgeist. Yeah, it's the spirit of the time, the spirit of the 21st century. And now everybody has this feeling of, okay, how, what is the Zeitgeist actually right now in our times here? And now if you imagine just for a moment that you would be in possession of the power in order to add something to this spirit or to take something out from the spirit, which means you are able to contribute to that global spirit. The question now is what type of a spirit would you then integrate into nowadays times? And from my side and why I keep the Shaolin teachings and why I keep sharing all of these knowledge and treasures out to the world right now is because I think that type of spirit to not give up when the times are getting hard. It's not just the Shaolin who are, who are living this type of spirit, but they also possess it. Because this is what makes the difference between someone that we call a warrior and maybe another person, somebody that we call who succeeds and somebody you maybe call today a loser. The difference is both are going to come to the point where they are facing the challenge and when they are maybe facing also their defeat for the first time. The only difference is that the warrior keeps going. Yeah. And somebody who does not have enough courage who does not have enough discipline, who does not have willpower, maybe he just does not have the power anymore to keep on going and going and going after he failed so many times. But because of these failures, because there is something inside of you which, which feels that you don't want to fail the fourth and fifth and sixth time anymore, because of this, something else inside of you starts to become very, very strong. And once again, and then you only need to keep repeating and going, repeating and going. Don't lose sight. Don't lose sight. Be open of what the future brings. Yeah. On the one side, it's also very important to not have too much fixed goals in, in your own life. So that means don't make too concrete pictures in the mind of how the future should look like. The goals, I think you cannot, um, you do not have, let's say, impact on the goal itself. 
but what all of life's purpose, all of the 24 hours day you do have is that you can shape the direction of where those goals are going to, to appear. So it is the direction in a way that we are shaping. I strongly think that every human being, first of all, has a great, 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 great possibility to take something in your own hands and base decisions that you are taking for your lifetime based on your own ideas. So you have something in your hands. This is the one part. At the same time, I also think there is something you don't have in your hands at all. It's not in your hands. It's out of question. Like what, for example? The fact that right now that my nose in that sense or your nose, it is the nose that our grandfather 10 generations before also already had. So now the question is, how much influence do you, how much influence do I have in deciding what nose is now here on my face? I think none. So that means there is some information that has been given to you, that has been given to me, that we were born with. You can't change it. That is the one part. Now if I bring this thought a little bit more far, what does it mean? It means I think some people are born with the character, let's say of a sheep. Yeah, which doesn't mean a sheep is a bad animal. It just means a sheep is a sheep. And other people, other humans, maybe are born with a character which is a little bit more similar to one of a tiger. This is not about now which is like now better. It's not about better. It's about to understand where is your nature coming from? What is your natural uh, what is your natural aspiration? Why? Because somebody who like lives together always in the community, like a sheep, he doesn't want to become the CEO of a, of a company and be the, the lonely wolf. He is happy to just have some time with the community friends, with his surroundings, and he doesn't, he's not inter interested in dominating other people. Yeah, but at the same time, if you put like just a few tigers together in the room, yeah, then the natural thing also happens. And some people are made to build something up. Meaning they are made to lead, they are made to guide, they have the potential inside of them to bring it out and other ones they are happy with the way how things are. When the rules are set, they just follow the rules and they are fine with it. And this is where I see a little bit that, importantly, that it's not about good or bad, but it is about listening to yourself. What is it that you really want on the one side and also what you're capable of? And therefore, not everybody wants to manifest. Not everybody has the skills to manifest. And this is also something very funnily why in the Shaolin Temple, for example, we say from a thousand students that come, ultimately maybe one or two from a thousand are ultimately really staying in these type of practices. Because the big problem is always like this. You always have people that have the willpower. So they want. They, they really want it. But then they don't have the character. Then you have people which have really 
that type of character, that spirit of character that we were, let's say, looking for, the problem is, but he doesn't want to have this type of life. So to find a person who has the characteristics, so his character, let's say, is suitable, merged together with the willpower that he also wants this way of life, this is something very, very rare. It's very rare that something like this is happening. Many people want to achieve something great, yes, but they don't have the character to do it. Their character is going to stand on the way, on, on, on their own way. They have the willpower, but they don't have the character. Other people have the character, but they don't want. If you find someone who is able to inherit both sides, this is something very special. And this is then where I think the manifestation takes place. When I say make the best of your lifetime. It simply also means how aware are you when one minute of your lifetime has already passed? What did you do in the last one minute? If you say, I, I don't know, I just woke up and then six hours were gone. Yeah, that means, yeah, because you were unaware of what happened in the last six hours. But in the moment where you are having different type of practices, when you, be, when you become more fine. When you become more fine, that means within one minute, you have more images. Your camera took more pictures in that sense. You can remember more things. Yeah, so it, that means one minute is like more colorful already for you, filled with more memory than another person in a whole week. He doesn't know what did, he, what did I do the whole last week. He doesn't know anymore. So that means to become more fine also really translates ultimately into this ability that you are just able to immerse yourself more even into this life. So your experience of the days become longer. The amount of impressions that you are able to suck in becomes more. It doesn't feel like a boring life. You have just become more fine, paying attention to, to details where other people, they, they don't see anything moving. You see thousand things are moving. And this is where like from physical training and to, to mental training, why this is related together so closely and this is now speaking about the martial arts for example because I have become fine about myself and know how I am built up I know where my bones is and which bone is where because I know it on myself I also know it on you because we are like this we are the same human so what I have discovered about myself, I know you also have it. The difference is now, when now our bodies meet, and let's just say it's about a game, about who can adjust who, because I know where everything on you is located, I touch you and I adjust you. But if you touch me, then maybe you don't know where my bones are located. So what does it mean that in the moment where you become more fine, you become more fine, you can make better adjustments. Adjustments and feeling of why am I at the moment so unhappy? What is it that uh, like took down my mood today? Yeah. What is it during the daily life which is affecting me the most? What is it? What is the poison that is like poisoning my days and my weeks? What is it that I need to readjust in my lifetime until I finally get to this pleasantness that I am maybe looking for? 
Yes, and of course, all of this, that you even have the chance to invest some time to follow up in this type of approach, at least the physical secu security must have been given as a basis already for this. Now, what I mean is, everything that we talk about right now, if we now go to Africa or any other country where the people are still starving and don't have enough food to eat, they don't care about the philosophy that I just talked about. They don't need philosophy. What they need first of all is food. Finished. So, these things to care about what is on your mind and how is your emotion and how to balance yourself and how to reach harmony, this we only at the moment can spend time with because our physical security is already saved for us. But somebody who does not have this physical security of the body will survive, he simply does not have the mental capacity to even deal with such things. Yeah? And that means even now when we find somewhere in the world people who maybe are then going to see these videos, but they still complain about that uh, they don't know how to pay their bills or whatsoever. Yeah? These people also, first of all, need to find a way that the security of existence, number one, must have been given. It must be there first of all. Yeah? Once it's there, once your existence, let's say, is secured, now comes the question about how to balance stuff out now. But when the existence in the first place is not even there, when you are not even know how you're going to survive next week, these questions don't matter. Stay tuned and subscribe to the channel because we do plan on working with Master Shihang Yi in the future. Um, it's something that we're trying to arrange, just waiting for our paths to cross um, again. So it's something we're looking forward to. Uh, if you enjoyed that, please head over to his Instagram or to Shaolin.online, linked down below where you can do master's online courses as well. Um, today's video was sponsored by betterhelp.com, linked down below where you can get professional therapy online. Something that I genuinely recommend. This past year for me has been a journey through therapy and all of it, Every single bit of therapy has been done online and uh, I couldn't have uh, wished for a better experience. So I do recommend it fully. Um, and also, as always, sponsored by Mullenmodels.com, where you can now buy the Inspire Change t-shirts and all of that helps support projects like this. This is the only way we can fly all the way out to Europe with our film crew and be able to make these projects happen. So thank you so much. Um, follow me on Instagram, at Jordan Mulligan Brother. Go have a blessed and productive day and share this with somebody if you feel that it will help and help inspire some change in the world. Peace.